Uh, what's up, guys? Uh, we are here with another episode of the Cymatic Show. Today, we got Larry O in the building. What's up, man? Hey, what's going on, man? Uh, nice to finally match the you get me voice. You get me. You get me. <laughs> a real person. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know Larry, he's been. We've been sharing a ton of his content on Instagram. I mean, you've been you've been posting religiously content yeah. up there. Yep, every day. Yeah, doing for a ton. How long? Of, um, daily. Yeah, like how long have you been doing this daily? Because I've noticed it's every day. It, now it's every day. The When I first started out, it wasn't every day. It was maybe like three times a week when I noticed that it was starting to catch on and I wanted to start doing tutorials. Um, but I would say for the last, I mean, it seems like a long time, but it's probably only been like three months straight that it's been like every day. Uh, every day for three months? You know, what, you know what's funny yeah. though? Is That's that really it, seem, it seems like a year. Because it does, bro. To me, it does day. too. But literally like I can go back and look and I remember the date too. It was like May 18th where I posted like my first, like I, well, I got to like 5,000 followers on like May 18th. Mm -hmm. And now from, from then to now, like this is like Damn, what I've grown that's in. a short period of time. Yeah, it's pretty short. Yeah. And you haven't it's, done a lot of like giveaway stuff or like no, I've only, stuff like just that. Content. It's just been content. Just straight content. I've only done a couple of giveaways and I've been like pretty strategic with them and like making sure that it looks natural enough, you know, like mm -hmm. for the yeah. following. For, yeah, like, for, for those of you guys, I mean, the reason you got to pay attention here is because, I mean, Larry's picking up some serious momentum on Instagram. That's what, what, what linked us up together. We were like, you know, seeing how much content, how diehard of a fan base you started building, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so that's definitely awesome. Not to mention he's somebody who's actually done some really interesting stuff with essentially a, a home studio business that you kind of built up with clients yeah. and, and stuff like that. And also has done, you know, been on, I think, four different tours, you said? Yeah, like I had a, I was in a hip hop metal band for like eight years up until 2017. And we did like three or four, like really good tours, decent yeah, tours. Ex yeah, exactly. Done tours and even had releases on Trap City. So you kind of yeah. like done a little bit of everything, right? A little bit, dabbling here and there, like a little bit of everything. You like the tour life more or home studio? Home studio. All day. All That's day. what I say too. Yeah. It's just like, I, I would yeah. not want to have to go out. And, I just hate planes too. Like, I mean, I don't mind them, but like, well, it's, I'm it's not a huge fan single either, bro. day. It's just like, come on. It's also yeah. airports, yeah. not even the plane. That as much it's as an the, all day event, man. Yeah. It's like an all day thing when you, when you're traveling, it's an all day thing. And you know, what's one thing. So like I did one event where I flew into New York city. We, we did this big event uh, and it was actually a crazy amount of people showed up. And then all of a sudden we left within 18 hours, all of it. And dude, I just remember it was so like taxing. And I'm like, dude, if I, if we did this all the time, that'd be a nightmare. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And there's people that do it, bro from country to country like look at these big pop stars oh, like man. i feel i feel for them i mean imagine they're making the money shows a year oh my dude, god and, and you kind of see it come <laughs> out a little bit i can't imagine bit. it you, do you remember who who was that one rapper when he was talking about being sick uh it's when he looks like a little kid kind of little zan little zan the, i don't zan. know if i believe that motherfucker he was, no no but like i thought he was like 14 dope sick no he's he's like 21 22. yeah he oh. looks like he's legit anyways 14, i remember though, yeah. i remember him live doing a live stream where he's like sick and shit talking about but then he was they just keep going like shows like keep pushing the the yeah, artist to keep doing they more own shows. him man it sucks like especially when there's that much money on the line like and people put up millions behind you like look at what happened to cardi b she got pregnant her team must have been so heated when she got pregnant i don't know how the fuck she came out of it so good she i don't know either it. man she did because a good job she it, did man. a really good job she like i give the her album while she was pregnant too she said did you? yeah i give her like, so like, many props baby, yeah, she like, was in the studio yeah. pregnant yep she she's like she, rapping i'm about pretty sure she said something about like throwing up yeah. feeling like shit just like in the studio that's i forgot what song she said specifically she was pregnant it was like a big song too she's like yeah i recorded that when i was pregnant that's that's crazy man. wild yeah, that is fucking wild. Um, yeah, I got a bunch of interesting shit. If by the way, if you see, me, I didn't, I didn't tell you this earlier. If you see me and Drew looking at her phones, we're, we're looking not, at questions. We're not texting or anything. We're not like <laughs> fuck this guy. Like, could you imagine? They're just commenting back on IG <laughs> if you want to know. Yeah, well, no, it's funny because dude, imagine watching it from like a uh, viewer's perspective. You're like, damn, fuck Stephen and Drew. They're like, these assholes aren't even looking at Larry. <laughs> yeah, but no, man, it's actually that we're kind of like digging through the questions and stuff. That's all um, good. So I'll start. Uh, so like, how does it work as far as like how do you make money with music? Like, uh, what's the split like? Like studio. right now, like, yeah, the, my like revenue stream right now, it's, it's, it's nothing wild, but it's definitely different like revenue streams right now. It's like, I make money from like streaming because I have so many songs out there online mm -hmm. and we, we've had like me and my homie, Peter Piffin have had like some hits, like not hits, but like for independent musicians, like some like pretty successful yeah. songs, like three, four, five million on, on a couple of songs. And between YouTube and Spotify, Apple Music, mm -hmm. that's one stream. My other stream is like studio work. Uh, 
hourly sessions, mm -hmm. which I don't do too much of anymore. But um, that was like one of my main sources before all the like streaming started popping off. It was just like studio sessions. But now that's starting to like slow down a little bit. I have my regulars. So it's it's the uh, streaming, the studio sessions, custom beats, mixes, masters uh, f through IG now, you know, which that picked up a lot because mm -hmm. of like the tutorials and everything. They just yeah. see what I do and hit me up, you know, it's, um, and that. I think that that's about it. Dude, you have a lot of revenue streams. I mean, I think Dude, a lot of people I think, need to think about this shit. Yeah. Like, oh, and 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 I'm not making crazy crazy money, you know what I'm saying? And like, but that's But you're doing it full time. But you but I'm doing it full time, but that's what it takes to do it full time. A lot of people think I'm just going to put a song out there and it's going to go and I'm going to make a living off of music. Yeah. You're fucking out of your mind. Most, it's not going to happen. Most of the time it's yeah. not going to happen. I mean, yeah. dude, even like Flume was teaching at like an Ableton school or something like yeah, that. Yeah, a lot of people do shit like that. You have you know? to, man. You have to. You guys know that. Like you, you have to have multiple streams, multiple streams. And now it's like, it's, it's like promo through IG too, you know, like different, yeah. different promo people hitting up for like shout, not shout outs, but just like, like product placement type videos. Mm -hmm. um, Dude, they're sending, they're sending Drew, all, Drew's getting all kinds of goodies. Over I there bet. Getting sent yeah. to him. I'm like, Drew, throw me as in soon on as, that, as soon as Joker. <laughs> yeah. And but, it's, and it's pretty crazy too. Cause you know, when you, when you, when you don't have that following, it's like, oh man, I got to buy this and buy that. But now people just reach out and they want you to use their shit. Like that. Dude, me yeah. and Drew take it to the point where we'll even do campaigns for shit like that. Yep. Because also you got to think you're, you're not only getting a free thing, uh, when you, when you get free stuff from other companies and mm -hmm. stuff, what essentially is, it's a doorway open to a relationship too, exactly. which you could take any direction, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yep. So like, it's a lot of plus. Yep. And it's not just the following either. You know what I mean? You got to just be a, a, a cool person like yeah. with to build these yeah. relationships like mm -hmm. the relationships that i'm starting to build now is is all because we just had like that that like good networking you know like just fucking reaching out to to me or i reach out to them and show them love share this share that it's just mm -hmm. it's just that networking Dude, shit straight up man like that like like what, what you're talking about is so important in the music industry mm -hmm. man and i think that you know that's why me and drew talk a lot about like character dude you know earlier drew calls me he's mm -hmm. like yo well, you know we talk all day if I, you see me going out and phone calls and shit but like first thing he says like yo how, how's Larry O? Because we yeah. never know till we meet someone. Of in course, yeah. <laughs> and I can, I can imagine like, how it's going to be for you yeah, guys and, 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 asking me to come out. Yeah. And like, I don't know this. Well, dude. instantly, but it's awesome because sometimes you don't know if it's a facade on the internet. You know what yep. I'm saying? With brands, exactly. you never know. There's is this definitely the, people? Like how's that, this person that. actually in person? But it was cool because I was like, oh, he's he's a he's a bro. he's like somebody I'd hang out with outside mm -hmm. of music. Like no cinematics, we'd be chilling. You know? Yep. So I was like, cool. But like. I don't know. I think that that part you're talking about industry relationships, man, like just being cool. Like, yeah, that's such a hard thing to explain, though. Just be it cool. Is. Be cool, man. Just be cool. <laughs> it's such yeah. a vague thing. Hey, man, just just don't be just don't be a piece but of shit. But there's definitely <laughs> some people. I mean, even like people that we've we've tried to work with in the past that are just like they don't work because they're just not cool to hang around. Yeah. Or, like, or and it doesn't matter what they're following is. It doesn't matter how much money they make. If they're hard to work with and hard to be around, it's just not going to oh, work. Yeah. Dude, also like people, sometimes people are also scared online to like, yep. sh like, uh, so you probably notice this with us. I'm not scared to share my audience, right? Mm -hmm. We're not scared to share. Oh yeah, I see that 100%. You know? But even if we're way bigger I'm, than I'm somebody. I'm witnessing firsthand. Yeah, like even with I, my I, stuff. Yeah, we were doing that, the, the seven day FL studio challenge. I'm yep. like, dude, let's put it out to 1.1 million producers let's get people yep. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. but uh yeah dude with with it's funny just like sharing other people's stuff is like probably the e even if you're smaller it's the easiest way to instantly because what happens is on instagram they get notified okay the instant dialogue yeah and that's why shit like people don't understand man they that's feel like too they, good they feel like they uh they owe you something a little bit you know what i mean it's just like when you share something reciprocity like, yeah you just for life you have that that person feels like they owe you something a little bit yeah. Isn't like, that weird kindness? It's so It's so weird. Like there's people that specifically I'll have like little just back and forth, just like I do with you. Yeah. Instagram conversations just because one time they like shared my thing or gave me some love on something. So I'll, I'll talk to them a little bit. Yeah. But I won't do that with everybody that's just no. like, yo, can you help me out? Finding, figuring out like what mic to use Why? Why though? There's, there's a real reason. Somebody, it's like, it's that one hand washes the other type of mentality. It's like. They helped me, so I feel like like I'm cool mm -hmm. with helping them. But somebody has to be the first one sometimes. Yeah. that's where it gets. Dude, it's weird. Nobody wants to be the first one. Dude, you know what's we don't crazy? Want to be in the first no, no, me we, and Drew. Yeah. We try it. We go out of our way. So, so look, me and Drew. Yeah. Dude, but that's why you're a rarity. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, there's not a lot of people like that. So, did you know some crazy strategies we're using? Like, do some really like because when you do it, like we try to do like the the goodwill and outreach and stuff. We yeah. try to do it at scale. Mm -hmm. So, like, dude, we'll we'll take things and try like so. One secret trick, or anybody listening to this, or whatever. 
dude, always try to buy the other person's anything they're selling. Mm -hmm. Like straight up, because like, dude, for us, that's like the old, almost one of the most respectful ways to, um, to, to, uh, to essentially like kind of establish a relationship. Even uh, Gabe from Legion Beats, yeah. he like bought our product and like sometimes instead of just asking for him, that like, means oh. a lot. Like I'm obviously, like, like we'll send it to him, mm -hmm. but like the fact that he buys it and goes, he's up like, I'm not going to hit them up. I'm going to just, I'm just going to buy it because yeah. he knows he's in this, he's yeah. in this field. He and knows because that. of that. We like. Yep. We saw that he went out of yeah. his way to do Yeah, or that. we've had yep. you just people in the past, like, you know, just buying stuff. And it just shows the level of support. That's I have, I mean. Like, I have a great example of that, too, with um with Mixed in Key. I found out about Mixed in Key through you. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So I found out about Mixed in Key. I went and I bought the plugin. Then I did a, a video on my IG about how to install and, in, uh, like, how to download and install plugins into FL Studio. Mm -hmm. And I did it with Mixed in Key. I bought it. They didn't pay for any promo. Mm -hmm. None of that. I just posted it. People asking in the comments, yo, what plugin is that? How do you get it? Uh, like, what does it do? And I'm just started tagging mixed in key. And then from there, the relationship built oh, yeah. because I, I just, I didn't, I could have reached out to them and been like, Hey man, I have this many followers. What do you think about doing a, like a contest or a giveaway or a, or a blah, 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 blah. Just like using that leverage. But I just went, I, I liked the product. I bought it and it, that started the relationship. Yeah. Just like you said, dude, you know, what's crazy, Larry. Okay. So the, the reason I'm, as I'm, as you're talking, I'm thinking the reason yep. I like you down here, dude, I feel like you get the, uh, you get the new wave of what's going on. <clears throat> like there's this thing, crazy thing going on with the music industry, the social mm -hmm. networks, the social media and shit. And like this, like thing, you know what I'm saying? And even just hearing your ideas and stuff, you get like the, the wave and why yeah. content and all that stuff, super important, you know? Yep. It's huge, bro. It's huge. Like, def I, I'm obsessed with paying attention to social media and and like what's going on. What What do you think? What do you think is the next wave? I mean, TikTok is clearly the next wave right now. It's the it's it's <laughs> yeah. happening. It's not even like the new wave. It's like in there. It's have, in there. Like Instagram. Have you was been in using there. it a lot just as a user? I'm trying. Yeah, I'm trying. I haven't had anything like really hit, but I'm I'm like. I'm getting hip. I'm trying to find my little my little niche on there, just like I found that Instagram. Like, look how long it took me. I've been on Instagram for eight years or something crazy yeah, like that, and just now figured out like, oh, you gotta bring value to people, or you gotta like like try to help people and like entertain them and provide some sort of like some value yeah. substance. Yeah, like, you, and so I'll figure that out with TikTok soon. But I'm definitely aware of how they're using it. I know all the trends, all that shit. Like, dude, I, just, I pay attention to Dude, everything. I use TikTok a lot. Mm -hmm. I catch myself so using good, TikTok. Man. I'm going to say, so I try to study what I like to use just mm -hmm. as a user. And I realize that I'm starting to like TikTok more than Instagram. As I, like entertainment when I'm bored and I'm-, I'm As a user, as a, just a, like a, a user, consumer. Because consumer, that's how I learn, that's how I try to learn the platforms is just use it as if like a fan or like Me as too. if a regular person so I can then better Me understand. Too. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. I, I find myself, this is how I know it's, 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 it's like- it's next level. I'm on there scrolling when I just go back to Instagram to just check my like my comments or my DMs. And then I'm out of Instagram and I go back to TikTok and I'm just watching these fucking yes. TikTok videos. And I'm like, <laughs> I like, I'm, like scrolling through. Oh, dude, fucking yeah. Drew at the, the motherfucking hospital video. 1.3. Yo, that's the, that yeah. was a skeleton a in lot, the closet. I got a lot of cool stuff coming from that, too. I'm not going to talk about it yet. Yo, yeah, I but even cool. so. I need to hear about so, that after no, this. We're doing, so we're going to do a TikTok episode. That's like a case study mm -hmm. type stuff. And there's a lot of interesting case studies, even especially in music that you see coming Dude, out. Somebody I, I told uh, our friend Moonboy the other day, like probably a month ago, right? About a month ago, I was like, yeah. yo, you should get on TikTok here because he's like a, he's got like a really bubbly, like YouTuber personality. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? He's got green hair. Good he's got like TikTok. a little moon face tat, shit like that. And I was like, I was like, you should be on TikTok like right now. And he already had a video get a million plays in this short time, in a month. That's anyway. what's wild about it. And like, yeah, a million views on TikTok is different than getting a million on YouTube and stuff like that. But like, you can build a brand on there right now. Oh, like, yeah. you can build like there's I'm people transferring followers. When I, when that hospital video went off, I got 10k followers in a week. That's, That's out of control. Yeah. That's out of control. You can't say it doesn't work for, for no. But if fans. there's anybody hating on TikTok, like get with it. Well, the like, biggest thing I see is the thing about the cringe. Like people are like, "Oh, it's so cringy." I don't even see dude, that many videos like that. I see more just cool videos. No, no, no. Straight up, if somebody says that TikTok is cringy, I instantly say, "Oh, you don't use it, do you?" And of course, they never do. No, they what just they, do they, they saw the ads. They don't probably. like the ads or YouTube. Yeah, the you the ads don't t they give a good. Okay, that's what it is because the ads I've seen a shit ton. They don't give good justice to what TikTok is. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's crazy, man. It's just a it's bunch just, of good it's like, creators. Yeah, man. It's 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 spawning like real creativity. 
Like TikTok is designed in such a way that it's like making people and making kids like be super creative with the with their edits. Like there's there's shit on there that's like so genius and it's like a 14 year old that made it. I'm like, yo, that is fucking oh, it's genius, crazy. bro. Dude, like look at the plays on this middle top video. Oh my god, dude! He's bro. hitting like that. I know, I know, I know that. I know that. Zach King, he's a beast. Yeah, yeah. I know Zach King for. I, I found out he's a he's a voice actor too, right? I think so. He's like he's got twenty six million on TikTok, and I'm just like he's probably one of the most popular. But I mean, dude, he's hitting. But there's a couple a of those mega monsters. But he he had a huge huge fan base before TikTok. But that's still it doesn't it even doesn't like matter. it doesn't matter. But like you look at just, what look at what happens when you bring someone to a fan base. Yeah, but his content yeah. too. It's like almost like. Beautiful for TikTok, the yep. way it's so viral and eye catching and stuff. You know what's Bro. perfect about TikTok is that anybody can do it too. Because anybody, it should be iPhone videos. Yep. Or it should just be your phone taking a it's, video real quick. They make it in such a way where it's like how Vine was, where it has to. It makes you creative. It makes you like, all right, how am I? Well, with Vine, it was the six second videos, mm-hmm. and it was like, how can we make this six seconds? like go viral or like just be like really like yeah, creative super interesting man and i i f- feel like the vine people found a new home on tiktok for sure yeah definitely hell it's, yeah so it's, you, it's, you uh, see a lot of the vine culture talked about in the comments or random people bring up vine or mm-hmm. like this like dude there's some pages that are like vine talks have you guys seen vine talks um like youtube pages and no, stuff no, like no, that no vine talks is a tiktok page that really yeah but what they're doing is they share vine videos but it's called vine talks wow. and it's really That's popular funny. do you remember when the vine pages went viral on facebook early on mm-hmm. yeah whoever was sharing vines yeah all the going, compilations yeah they still have yeah. those on youtube that are popular oh really yeah, yeah dude those used to be hot bro videos. those had a lot of attention Yo, there's at this point. guy named like Mar- this is pretty random but like so speaking about vine like how vine created like big like content creators and like influencers and just comedians, whatever, like this guy, Marlon Webb, I think is his name. Mm -hmm. He's like an Instagram, like comedian Mm -hmm. actor basically. But I remember him starting out on Vine. He was like the Water Malone guy. Do you remember the Water Malone guy? Water Malone. Yes, I remember that. That That was him. He started out on Vine and like blew up when Instagram started like blowing up. You know, okay. So you may tell you why Vine creators are really good. I think in my opinion, because have you noticed that a lot of monsters, even like Logan Paul and those, a lot of monsters came out of Vine. Mm -hmm. Remember when it dissipated, they like went to other platforms. Yeah, the real ones stuck around. But I think in in content, I think that the first three seconds is one of the most important things were being hooky. Mm -hmm. And I think that Vine taught every creator that that was important. Because they only had That's a, an important thing for videos, man. So if I think the first three seconds is not like grabbing your attention you're going, like that. People are just scrolling yeah. right past. And it's not even like it's yeah, it's 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 just a natural thing. It's just the the way the internet molded us. <laughs> you know, it's just yeah, like we have the shortest attention gone. spans ever. That's like why when I do the, I did that Tesla video the other mm-hmm. day. In the past, I opened it a different way. I did a different Tesla video and I did a different style of video. But mm-hmm. when I did it, I was like on top of my car in goofy pants, like I driving know. the car with speakers on top of the car. Like it just looks ridiculous, yep. but it's like it's like that first three seconds yep. just grabbing people in every time. It's yep. so good. What made you get into FL Studio? Damn, that goes way back. I started on FL Studio 4. You're an OG like me. OG. Damn. Yep. So I don't know what year. I think it was, hmm. it had to be like 07 or 08. Does that make sense? Maybe FL 4 and 07 or 08. Um, Somebody will correct you. Don't worry. If yeah, I'm sure somebody, somebody's gonna be like, "Hey, hey you. you fucking moron!" It was <laughs> <laughs> some dirty fucker. Like, uh, <laughs> it was actually on July. You don't really use FL Studio, <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah. So the thing that probably made me get into FL Studio, I just became obsessed with beats and just listening to like hip hop in high school. Mm-hmm. And like shortly after high school, I was trying to figure out like what the hell to do with my life, and I started. I honestly can't even remember why I like downloaded FL Studio, but, or how I even found it. It must've been through just like Googling something like how to make beats, like something that stupid, like how to, how to make beats. And I Googled it and I found people, oh, people are using this thing called F Fruity Loops. Cause nobody knew mm-hmm. FL Studio mm-hmm. then it was just Fruity Loops. And, uh, I downloaded it. Don't sue me. <laughs> but, yeah, I was 18. I mean, but like, older now, so it's not um, deal. I fucking think. so yeah and I, I i got it and just started like trying to figure it out and back then like youtube wasn't even as strong as it is not even close as it is now and i had to look up how to do things through forums and read mm-hmm. and yeah. just like read just shit. twist knobs that's what i did and just twist knobs like figure it out like i didn't have any friends that were in music i had a couple of friends <coughs> that were in a band 
you know, like, but that wasn't even, that didn't even happen yet, really, because I started making beats before the band. And like, I just, I don't know, I figured it out. I just became like really obsessed with making beats and I made shitty beats for like five years. That's how it used to be. Now you can, yeah. now you can make some good beats and with, the, with the shit that you guys put out there. It's like yeah, that, that somebody that helps. started in a week can make a fire beat with the yeah. stuff that that's, that's the dope shit about like the cinematic I, stuff. I think, I think at the end of the day though, if you don't ever learn those like intricate details, you're not going to be able to get yeah, very far. So, right. Yeah, you're right. Even if you have good, and you're going to have the work ethic too. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta put the work in and not yeah. just, not just on the music side. Like people get confused, like the music business or the music industry. If you don't have that business industry side, you're just, just the music. You're fucked. Yeah, you're definitely. Fucked. Cause I mean, I've argued with people that, the 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 ratio is 80 20 and it's 80 percent business and it's 20 percent like talent and actual like music and the content you know but mm -hmm. it's like 80 percent business well that, that's why some people get even fucked by bad manager because you gotta yeah. think there's some talent that if they were working with a better manager which yep. is essentially a business partner kind of that handles the business side if they suck yep. your mm -hmm. project's not gonna move either you know what i'm yep. saying and I think that sometimes, like, that could be a fucking... Definitely, bro. And some people jump into getting a manager, like, way too soon when they don't even need one. Yeah, a sometimes lot of people... learning that stuff on your own is better anyways. Yeah, you figure it out. Makes um, you dependent, too. You're not dependent on some other yep. person to do all your shit. I'm glad we learned the business side of it or we'd be fucked right now. We we're just trying to... You'd have this product with, like, even like no knowledge in how to yeah. move it. Dude, everybody thinks they need a label too is what's funny yeah. they don't need a label a lot of times they need a manager they're mis they're, they don't they don't know actually what getting signed or anything really is a lot of times it's just kind of like they think like oh i'm gonna get signed and the label's gonna take care of it no. i'm like i mean dude no. I, even for me thinking i'm like no dude you need a manager before that or even just like a business partner or a friend to help you with yeah. the other side the people know? that think like that don't last yeah mm -hmm. they don't last because they find out real quick that the label <laughs> doesn't work like that like the reason why a lot of labels sign artists now is because they have their own thing moving before they even get signed. Yeah, yeah. Like you have to have, you have to have this machine moving first. It's not like, I think I just talked about this recently on like a live stream or something, but um, it's not like back in the fifties where they would just like hear you singing on the street and be like, let's sign them, yeah. sign them now. It's not like that anymore. Yeah, no, you got to have this machine moving by itself before anybody signs because you. why would why would a management company or even a label a record label or something like that why would they take a risk when there's so many people already having traction why would you take a risk on somebody you know what i'm saying they won't yeah they won't take a risk so so after you started using fl studio how did that progress into you eventually doing the the home studio stuff uh and recording artists and stuff um and are I, you using I, pro tools for that by the way no you're just using fl fl for everything i i used to use cubase and then kind of go back and forth where I was like, because FL Studio wasn't as good as it is now with audio recording. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It wasn't, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Like you couldn't see the sound waves being recorded mm -hmm. as they went. Like yeah, there was yeah. just like little things that like it wasn't geared towards that at all yet. But um, yeah, I used Cubase. And then I would if uh, when I got to a certain point, I started exporting things out of Cubase and dumping them into FL Studio mm -hmm. to mix them. Mm hmm. And then I went from there and then just moved on to straight recording everything in FL Studio. So how'd you, how'd you get into eventually actually getting people to pay you to come to the studio and do that though? Bro, I don't I don't even, I like to trace it back. It's hard to think, but I was with my band and we were just around people that kind of did music. And then I, people just like caught wind that I was good mm -hmm. or like at least better than the person they went to last. And it was kind of just like a word of mouth thing was no like there was no like internet involved with that whatsoever i had the band and we had a studio and like when the band wasn't doing shit or like we were just like chilling we didn't have practice or shows or anything like that i was booking sessions and i just started basically from nothing just like recording us like and not charging anybody mm -hmm. to the point where it'd be like yo man how, like how much for a session and it just from there just kept going where and then i was you start with price where do you even start i think i started with like 20 an hour when i first started charging people i think so too right now i think that's cool like if you but if you got to get it to a certain point where like people are asking you if nobody's asking you then you'll be like hey man you want to record at my studio I'll just don't like don't even worry about like don't pay anything i just yeah. want to start recording people that's what you yeah. got to do first yeah, like, i know you, so many people would eat that up you know what i'm saying in two yeah. seconds like so many different i have friends who mm -hmm. like aren't professional but they the rap as like a hobby you yep. know what i'm saying and, and a lot of people do shit like that and would love to pay for yep. something even online and mixing and mastering services like like now people are hitting me up for it but 
before that, I was just like, hey, man, like, let me mix your song. Or like a oh, homie, like, mm-hmm. uh, let's do a project together. And you then that's just doing it for free then? Hmm? Just doing it for free? Just at, like at started? the beginning, yeah. That's what Gary V and his uh, his video guy D Rock yeah. are always just talking about preaching yep. nonstop. For me, it happened kind of like that. It was like a, mm-hmm. a mix of that and a mix of just like word of mouth because I was around a couple of people that were like friends, and I would like record our sell, our band and record mm-hmm. them and make beats for them, and then you know it's just a word of mouth in the local scene. I'm like, oh, Lario records. He, he's got a studio with, with with his band and shit. Like, go see him. And it kind of just went from there. That's fucking dope, man. I think so, that's awesome. So I have a, a random question, a uh, production question for mm-hmm. you. If you could tell a beginner one mixing tip that would instantly improve their mix, it can't be, you can't like combine techniques or anything. You have one thing that you're allowed to do in like FL Studio or whatever. EQ. That's it? Yeah. I mean, because you can, you could do a lot with EQ. Yeah. You could do a shit ton. There's only so much you can do with compression, but you can create a lot of like vibes and dynamic with just EQ. Yeah, that's definitely true. Mm. I think. What about you? I think if I had to choose one, it would probably be levels because I could get away with good samples. and. But you levels. can level with EQ, can't you? Yeah, you could. That's true. That's a that's a, that's a cheating. That's, yeah. <laughs> also, yeah, that's combining methods. That's yeah. you're not gonna level with the also EQ. just sound selection. Like starting sound off, selection. Starting yeah. off with the actual the good shit. Yeah, so you don't that's have right. to, that's probably where that's, you don't even have to mix that much. Yeah, I Dude. mean that's that's what like everybody's going for. Anyways, you think like fucking Kanye start maybe Kanye would start with some shitty drums on purpose, but yeah, he's a genius. But yeah. somebody else is not starting with shitty drums. They're starting mm-hmm. with good drums. I do think the level thing is important. I remember Drew sometimes when he's telling me he, he didn't even have songs EQ. They sound fucking amazing yep. <laughs> just because of volume levels you remember like, yeah and then well then uh, then that comment comes from like the sound design in the first place yeah that, that kind of sure. is that kind of touches on eq anyway mm-hmm. so yeah. uh yeah i don't know i would i'll probably choose levels and or eq either what, one would probably be pretty good so. yeah what's some of your go-to plugins in fl studio native yeah yeah um, I'll start with that and then parametric eq2 for eqing for like side chaining fl uh fruity limiter I use a fruity limiter like in every session for side chaining. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see what else do I use? What else do I use? What else do I use? Um, soft clipper. That's huge. Soft clipper. I think that's what I think works. Be I, want, I think Wonder Girl was talking. Fruity about. Delay Three, amazing. Ever since Twenty came out, the Fruity Delay Three dropped with that, and that's been like a game changer. I haven't gone to the Fruity Delay Two ever since. <laughs> haven't even used it ever since. Not touching it. Yep. I think. Yeah, I think I still use two. Bro, it's like night and day. Yeah. They have effects inside of the delay. Like that oh, just changes I'll the tell game you, I'll for tell me. You guys a, a saucy. It's like an echo boy. While we're on uh, delays, I'll tell you a saucy, saucy delay is the Manny delay from Waves and the Manny reverb. I probably have reverb. it and haven't even never Dude, opened you it. You should use a man. They're, I have all the Waves, I think. They're so good, man. They have they have like so Manny? Many built in. Yeah, it's like the, I think, I can't remember the guy's full name. It's like Manny something like a long like is Italian that what the plugins name named when you go to look to like it's like click it's, on it? yeah i think it's like manny verb or something for short i'm pretty sure but yeah definitely try that one yeah but those are probably the main ones that i use what about third party third party mm-hmm. mixed in key has been in every session like in studio recording <laughs> i'm telling you like that is the best money i've ever spent on a plugin that's funny man like, i use it a lot like, too shot, like cause especially with doing in studio sessions and everybody wants auto-tune mm-hmm. and they come with an mp3 beat so they come in, I load up the beat, I find the tempo, detect the tempo through the through like the sampler. You know, you just right click it, detect tempo, find that, and then I literally put the, the beat in a mixer and throw mixed in key on it, find the key, and then I load up auto tune with <laughs> that key, and it takes two seconds, bro. Like six, seven months ago, I would have to like just all right, just record a take, and then I'm gonna listen back. I'm gonna throw auto tune on there. I'm gonna find the key for you. Like that's <laughs> yeah, gone. Yeah. That's been that's out the window. That's awesome, man. You know, um, that's a third party plugin that I literally, and it's not just because like I, I built a relationship with them. It's because it's 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 like in my workflow. No, I remember when you started using it, and you were like, "Yes." I'm like, "Oh my, yo, bro, this is like a game changer <laughs> for me." That plugin, like literally. Do you save uh, like chains for when you're uh, yeah when you're doing all your vocal stuff? Yeah, I have a vocal chain um, for like vocal mixing. That's kind of just a generic chain with a mix of some uh, native and third party plugins. What do you use for that? I have, let me try to remember. I have an EQ. I have a CL, the CLA mm-hmm. in there. And it's like on this preset called like Hot Desert all so the time. The CLA vocals? Yeah. 
CLA Vocal Unplugged, I think it's called. Mm-hmm. And then I, I have it on a certain like preset, and then I always adjust that. I turn the compression off on that, so that way it's not being compressed a bunch of times. I have an SSL by Waves, mm-hmm. the compressor, on there. I have a DSer from Waves. I have a limiter. <coughs> I can't remember the exact order right now because I all I do is I, I go to my my preset and I just double click yeah, on it and I, I and I leave it. I'm trying to think of the that. exact order. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. And maybe two EQs, like one at the beginning and one like before or after uh, something else, like towards the end of the chain. Mm. Wow. Uh, What's your favorite synth? Omnisphere. That Me too. sounds like a, no, no, a generic ass answer. Everybody Omnisphere says it. is amazing, though. Number two is Silent, though. Mm. I love Silent. Why do you like Silent more than like something like Serum? I don't know. Maybe it's just like. Oh, uh, like a pre- personal preference because I know the quality on Serum is is amazing. Yeah, it's it's also the workflow is probably just easier too, just because like mm-hmm. the LFOs and stuff, you're not just hooking it up from a menu, you're dragging and dropping it. And I'm not stuff. like I can't like sound design like that. I know my way around them somewhat, mm-hmm. but I I don't go into like crazy detail. Dude, like, that's, that's how for, I that's, like, that's you, what that's man. what Drew does. He goes I know that the fucking super. I, like, I'm like doing the basic shit. On I there, give like know? huge props to people that do sound design because I can't. I'll be the first to admit it. I, I'm a preset tweak guy. Mm-hmm. What about loops? What do you think about them? Um, I think once I started getting over the fact that like, oh man, I don't, I gotta use, I gotta have everything my, be my <laughs> my own shit. Like I can't, I can't, I can't use loops. <laughs> that shit's cheating. Once I got over that, because I think every producer is like felt that at uh-huh. some point. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? But like once I got over that, I think it changed my whole like production level. I think it, it stepped up like. 50 yeah. percent once i started using loops because you can you can do so much with the loop you get and it, and it brings you somewhere where you wouldn't have gone if you That's were just exactly using what something. I was gonna you say. know it, like it's like sampling like mm-hmm. people sample because they they get stuck or they can't find the melody for something mm-hmm. like using loops for me is like if i can't think of something on the spot like to create like an original melody with i'll open up a loop real quick and just like let that like motivate me you know yeah nick Mirror was talking beat. about how music is about collaboration anyway so like you're gonna get new ideas that you never would have and then plus you get to work with somebody which is yep. fucking awesome essentially work with somebody by using a loop and you can bang out so much more so much more by doing that like yeah. so many beats nick mira when he goes in and he cooks up he probably makes 25 beats in a day that he knows he's gonna go in and make some beats i know and the crazy thing is he it, he's one of the guys that can sit there and I don't know if you watch his streams or any of his. A couple videos. times, yeah, I have. Uh, he can sit there and draw out a melody in two minutes. Yeah, oh, just he's no problem. He's, no problem. he's a he'll beast. Still use loops. That's what I'm saying. Like <laughs> so. you can do both. Like you can you can only do one. Then you can only do one. If you, if you can do both, then you're you're a you're a problem. You yeah, know what I mean? We got new rounds coming. Oh, oh boy, I, I oh. got I got a Miller over here. Oh, thank you. Oh, These twisties? Jake was quietly said. Those are twisties. Oh. Those are definitely not twisties, unless you want to tear your hand off. There. <laughs> Dude, I'm pumped you came out here, man. Yeah, it's uh, seriously, I'm, dude. I'm fucking. I'm I'm happy to be here, man. You have no idea. Like I, I'm sure I told you guys like a hundred times each. I've been like watching and studying what you guys do for the last year, at least the last year, and just to like to be here is crazy. Yeah, no, it's, it's awesome. dope. So, I mean, it's the same thing as mutual. It's cool to meet people online because at, at a certain point, there's like this weird. You don't get a real perception of the person until you like actually meet them. Yeah, you know, because you you see what you think they are. Yep. You know what I'm saying? But you really get to meet them. So I think that's also kind of like awesome. Dude, that's and we're going to be, uh, dude, we're going to be at the New York event. Yep. I'm fucking pumped. I'm there. Dude, people are going to, dude, I love it, dude, because so many people are going to come up about the fucking you get I'm in that. We also got the Gary V thing coming up soon. <gasps> oh, dude. Two. I forgot to, I didn't even tell him. Dude, we're going to Gary V's for round two of uh, the 4Ds program. Bro. And the the 4Ds is like that consulting we session. Yeah, yeah. One year ago, and that's when we started Instagram. It was one Changed year the ago. game. So oh, imagine. Yeah. That should be one, like a yearly thing now, huh? Yeah. yeah, pretty much. It's and, that imagine the imagine that, like, because how many things can change in a year, dude, marketing wise? Mm-hmm. Oh, dude, the best investment of our lives. Dude, dude, it changed the way we think about things. Mm-hmm. You know, what I'm saying completely. Like before, we were so driven on like, how can we sell the next pack? Now mm-hmm. we're like thinking about doing other types of stuff that's more for brand like this this conversation it's not about money or anything it's more like that. fun anyways nope. man yeah. we've had so much more fun over the last year than ever before just from doing brand shit man it's traveling to la gary v changed my life he changes a lot of life oh, yeah. he changes yeah, a lot of life like like 
I, once I changed my, like, this is something that I didn't really say, like, like how I got to the point where I'm at now is basically just like unfollowing and not liking or not commenting on any bullshit because you know what I mean? Like that, how that algorithm works is like, once you start watching certain things, even if you don't follow them, that negativity is going to end up in your, in your Mm -hmm. timelines. Once I started following the right things for my niche Mm -hmm. and just like for business in general, just like marketing shit changed. Like it's just that's all I consumed. Mm-hmm. That's that's all I consumed. That's how we got to Dude. stuff. Your guys' stuff, Cato's stuff, Gary V stuff. Like that, you know what I mean? Like all that that like that whole lane right there. Once I started following all those things, everything changed. Yeah. Dude, I'm excited. Uh, I text Cato. Dude, it's so funny. He, he was asking me. He was like, "Do we have an event on the same day?" And it's one day apart in New yep. York. Like the day after oh, our event, but he's doing sound advice. Mm-hmm. And my flight was showing up like a two hours after. And I was like, oh, fuck that. I was like, I scooted it back. I was like, dude, I'll go see what's going on. That's funny. At his, uh, at his New York event. Yep. Um, what do you, uh, when somebody first starts producing, what do you think they should focus on first? Because there's so many things. Like when I first started, mm-hmm. it was so many things getting thrown at me. And also, yeah. like you said, there's no resources. Like what, but now there's tons <laughs> of shit. So where do you even start? That's tough. That's tough, bro. Maybe because you can create your own lane, I, maybe I would say get good at like a little bit of music theory. I feel like if I learned, I, I still don't know it, but it, I'm at the point now where I don't have, I mean, I'm making a, an excuse, but time is, is, is like, you know, scarce now. And to go with some like music theory courses, I don't really have that much time Dude, to do. I mean, I understand. But if, if I did that at the beginning, I probably like, I probably would have progressed like so much faster, mm-hmm, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, that that, I mean, that is definitely a thing that you see. Like, learn a little bit. Like, you don't have to, like, go in and, like, just learn every little bit, every little thing about music theory. And that's just one opinion, too. Like, you can go into it learning music theory, like, and then from there you can just spiral it in. Like, I, I feel like what helped me a lot was, and vice versa, I, I started on beats. And then from beats, I, st- I learned how to play drums. Mm-hmm. And that's when I joined the band. And learning like FL studio and learning how to make beats helped me in the band Mm -hmm. and then being in the band and learning about guitars and bass and this sort of sound versus uh, a synthesizer. It was all new to me and that like helped me progress in that lane. So it's, I don't know, it's just where it brings you, you know what I mean? Like it can just bring you in any direction, but music theory is definitely like huge. If you want to start out, like try to, if you're looking for one thing to like go at and you're mm-hmm. trying to get into music mm-hmm. and you're sitting there like, r- like racking your brain, g- get into music theory. Cause that could bring you really far if you know it well. Dude, you should see this guy that I work with, uh, John, the, yeah. the Grammy nominated composer. I've seen some videos, bro. Dude, he can just go like that literally for like three hours straight, like just not stop pump out like 300 melodies in a row. It's That's ridiculous. Crazy. And obviously he doesn't have like the, the production side of it, but he's, he's like a full-time musician, but he found his lane. Just he knows his theory lane and yeah. piano and you it's know, incredible, yeah. man. So yeah, so I think like, even if you're just decent at it, it's like such a big help, man. Because you can say, yo man, give me this type of vibe or like, what do you think? Oh, I, I need something dark. I need something dark and like, but but bouncy or some shit like that. And he'll probably throw like, yeah, it's mm-hmm. like, hey, shop major and blah, 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 blah. And he just plays it out and you're like, yeah, that's it, bro. Just slow it down a little bit. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. That's it. It's like, pretty much all. That's all music theory do. right there. Like if like that's the kind of shit you can do if you know music theory. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's harder for people like me. Like I don't I don't know that stuff. I know my way around like a piano roll or a keyboard a little bit. I know the, the order of the notes. I'm not huge on music same, theory. Same thing. Why you see a lot of the producers sometimes do well is like a uh, like a duet or something where you mm-hmm. got one guy or one person's a producer and you also got a singer, you know, just to bring that layer of like shit. You know, yep. it's kind of like the, the 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 music theory type of yep. shit. You know, definitely. Um, what's some tips for working with vocalists when you do? Um, definitely like pay attention and like give them good constructive criticism, and don't like I've seen people like get super prideful Mm -hmm. with an engine and like the engineer, like singer rapper relationship where one person just want, like has to be right Mm -hmm. versus like doing what's good for the song. Yeah. And you got to cut that shit right at the beginning. Like that's, that's like, that's a recipe for a disaster, you know, like Mm -hmm. you got to be on the same page and really just be constructive and like check all the ego shit. At the door, you know? But without saying any names, can we hear about like some war- worse experiences you felt like it was just working with somebody? You don't have to use any names or something. Um, 
Because I'm, I feel like you, you've probably been in some situations doing some vocalists and you're in some work and it's just probably clashing, right? Yeah. I mean, there's been times where I just said like, hey, man, I'm busy. I can't book you. I, I can't book any sessions anymore because I just didn't want to deal with the person or whatever. Yeah. Like, like I, I don't know. Like, or I, or I just was like, yeah, like I can't, I can't do this. There's been times like that where they're just people, are, sometimes they're just difficult, even if they're paying you. And that's why I kind of wanted to like um like phase out like random recordings in the studio mm -hmm. like random because you're not yeah you're doing music for a living but it's not yours you don't feel that yeah. same connection mm -hmm. although like i do still like sauce shit up like f like unlike a lot of other people that's why i started getting a lot of clients mm -hmm. but i don't know i just like work on, on my own shit you know like i feel like for so many years i was focusing on other people's stuff yeah. more than my own no, but I mean, yeah. but I feel like that's good training, though. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because it forced you to go through like that work ethic dip, dip that some people try and just bypass and try to get big instantly. You know? Yep. Um, how, how important is it to to vibe with the person that you're working with? It's definitely important. It's def like if you're trying to build like you know, like a, a relationship between like you and an artist, you know, producer and an artist, or an engineer and an artist, and you're trying to like build something together. It's 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 really important. Like yeah. you guys got to connect and be on the same page. Like yeah. the way me and my homie Peter Piffin are like, we've been making music straight together for like five, six years mm -hmm. and we're still doing it. We still meet every week. We still like make tons of music together. Like that's huge. And this other kid that I work with named Lunchbag, he's like in the studio twice a week with me and we, we vibe, you know, it's yeah. just, we get each other. You gotta, and you'll know right away yeah. like that. It doesn't work with somebody. So no, it's super interesting. That's a huge thing we've been talking about lately. It's just people just reading people. We've mm -hmm. gotten so much better at it. Just and I'm sure like you've had a lot of people firing. in the studio recently, huh? Uh, yeah. I mean, not even just with that, just like with even just employees over time and like uh, people we work with, like influencers, even like there's certain people that have these warning signs and we've learned like literally the minute, you know, they do something. We're like, nope, that's it. There's certain things people do on off. social, the way they present themselves on social, and they, they, there's some there'll be a comment or something. You kind of tell like, oh, that person's like this. Or mm -hmm. like, oh, mm -hmm. it's like you show your tail a little bit. You know, yeah. You know, it's a big one, man. Is like people sometimes like, uh, you know, as an uh, there's a little bit of a responsibility I think when you have a fan base to not use that fan base to go lunge at another person to go lunge at a person in the comments who talk shit oh fuck oh, this man. guy we've seen a lot of people do that and you see your years. audience will lunge at them and it's kind of like they call it like i think they call it dogpiling on twitter they their policies but like you'll see people so they so, oh, so what you mean is basically like somebody will just like they have a following and they'll call somebody out on this because yeah. they know their fans will back them no matter yeah. what no matter what yeah. that's yeah. fucked up but yeah. but people do it to like I mean, dude, we people, that's spreading we negativity people, online, man. Know, like, what are you doing? Yeah. People like that I mean, are dude, not going to go anywhere. People do it all. The time. That's yeah. out of control. Like, no, this, I would like, I would completely like dead a relationship with somebody that dude, was doing that shit. Dude, did you, oh, dude, there was a situation. I think it was a Brazilian pop singer recently. I saw it on H3H3 mm -hmm. and essentially he like, he points the camera towards this girl and like makes fun of her and then points it back and posts it on his story. And he was making fun of her because her outfit kind of looked weird. Her hair kind of looked different, but she, she had cancer. And Damn. literally, he just made fun of this girl and posted it. And do peep like literally, they fucking riot, dude. He's getting canceled right now, like crazy. It's he's Good. losing everything or some, just posting some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. when you got fan bases that big, I just think people should be like, con like, like just conscious about shit. You got to be man, because you're you're influencing a crowd of people. Like in some cases, millions of people. Dude, people don't have that much common sense. They don't. Not, I've known that, bro. Most people don't have any common sense. In, in the years that I've been around, I've, <laughs> I've seen it, bro. I've seen it. And you just like, you scratch your head and you're like, how, how do you just not have that common sense? Yeah. It's supposed to be common. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, one thing I wanted to ask about, because a lot of mm. people are definitely curious. A lot of people want this. I want to talk about the tour life a little bit because yeah. you've had some crazy tour runs. And you want to maybe talk about the Warp Tour and then kind of um, just your experience with that whole thing and how it was. Warp Tour was our first tour ever. Wow. It was my first tour ever. We got – so I was – Started off with this band. I started making beats. Got with the band was like a group of my friends, a couple of them from high school, a couple of them just through like, you know, friends and family we knew. So we all really knew each other. We were banned for like for a long time before we ever got some traction. We started doing a lot of like local shows, regional shows around New England. We would go out for a weekend, come back. We did that for a few years. 
then we created a sound then we created like a little bit of a buzz like in the in the metal world you know the metal core like world and we got asked like we got a manager at the time the manager got us this relationship we ended up going on warp tour for our first tour ever like real tour like <laughs> that we were like leaving the we were leaving and That's we were going and we man. were going to play 50 shows in oh. 60 days across the whole country we had to rent an rv rent a trailer like we had none of that shit we had to get a tour manager we had to like we got signed do you know um <laughs> we got signed to ask an alexandria's uh label like How uh, ben Bruce. This? well i mean all this happened we got the management they um got the relationship with warp tour mm -hmm. and then also had a relationship this is why we got out of it because it was kind of a conflict of interest yeah and we're young and stupid don't know what, what what's what mm -hmm. and we kind of got ourselves into a conflict of interest but it's all like at that time you're not thinking about that kind of stuff oh, yeah we just went into it and we fucking in the matter of a few months we were it felt like that anyway we got warp tour and we got signed to a label. We went into like a real, like million dollar, multi million dollar studio in Long Island, <laughs> recorded a full length album. And then after that, we stayed and lived there for a month. <laughs> and then literally after that, that summer, because that was in the winter of, mm -hmm. of like 2013, about to be the new year, mm -hmm. right? Or maybe it was right after the new year. So maybe it was 2014. After that, in the summer, we were on Warp Tour. And then like, that's just like that. Insane. My anxiety insane, was man. at an all time. Oh, high, I believe bro. it, man. I was like in bad shape in that studio, bro. It was, it was, it was crazy. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah. Uh, yo, a ton. And I was moving <laughs> out. I was moving out of my house because we weren't making money like that. So I was like, yo, like let's, I, we moved in with my wife's parents. We moved out of my house, moved in with my wife's parents. Dude, and I, and then I went to shit. Long Island and I went on Warp Tour. Damn. That's a crazy story. And man. this was a year after I got married, too. That's insane. I had no idea you did all this shit. You need to tell this story to your audience. <laughs> I'm telling bro. it now. Oh, that's you're telling that's it now. Awesome. <laughs> this is fucking awesome, man. Yeah. This is a yeah. cool thing to know. Well, wait, so, you. so you go on this tour. I want to hear more about it. All right. So, like your first couple of shows, like what, what was it like when this tour started? It was like uh, 155 degrees in Houston, Texas. <laughs> 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 it was fucking awful, bro. <laughs> it was like, so we get we get to Houston and you know the anxiety's high. And the 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 first date we did was in Houston. And you guys know Warped Tour, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, like somewhat, it's in big lots, open lots. Yeah. So like we were in some random lot. I don't even know. I don't even know where it was basically, but in Houston somewhere. Waited all day to play. We're playing in front of uh, the guy who signed us, Ben Bruce. Ben Bruce flew out to the show. He's coming to see us. Do you know Asking Alexandria? Uh, no. The metal band? Uh, yeah, I do. Ben Bruce is like one of the founders of the band. Oh, wow. And we were the first band he signed to the label that he started on his own. With him and his manager mm. so like we were the first band that got signed and then the second band was some band from like europe that were like kind of cool with them mm. from like england how many people did you play for at most in of the shows? Tour? yeah i mean some days there was barely anybody in front of our stage because you got to think there's like 10 stages uh -huh. maybe more and if a huge band is playing at one time on one stage and they don't know you everybody flocks it's yeah. yo it was so stressful man it was like it was dope to be there but at the same time, waking up every day, like, you guys are going to go out and hustle. We got to go out and hold. In, we're out there fucking holding signs, bro. Check us out. We're playing at 545 on, on the Kevin Says stage. Some people, <laughs> Dude, like, that's awesome, it, though. Hu hustling. That's on, hustling we're bro. on this tour, yet we're still hustling on the tour to get people to notice us. That's crazy, bro. Yeah. This is why we're talking right now. How long ago up, is this? This is how you 2014. are, man. That's fucking 2014. awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, this is this is the path that I've <laughs> gone through. You yeah. Know? Um, but, like, yeah, so every day was, like, that stress. And also, you don't even know what fucking time you're playing every day. You wake up, and then the tour manager goes to the office, wherever they put the office that day, because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's just a traveling oh. circus. It's like, yeah. boop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He comes back, yeah, you guys are playing in a half an hour. Like, we just fucking woke up. What do you mean we're playing in a half an hour? Really? Like, yeah, bro. There were some days you play first, and it's like 11.45. What's, what's the craziest thing that happened on that tour? Craziest thing that happened? Like, you just remember, like, some person. Or on any tour. Or on any tour. Do you have any crazy, like, stories where you're out? Some drunk person? Oh, man, drunk people everywhere, bro. The tours that we did after Warp Tour were fucking were crazy because they were small venue tours. Oh, yeah. And you, you really see wild people bro Dude, <laughs> like Drew, wild Drew, wild people me and Drew went to a festival what was that festival in Atlanta we went to those were songs it was uh 
Shaky Beats? Uh, Shaky Beats. Anyways, we go to this festival. It's pretty cool. The setup festival, dude. There was some Sam Max fans that came up to us. And one dude was fucked up. And like, fucked up. Molly talking, and shit. Talking Steven's Bro. head off. Hard. He was it, cool. Think dude, about that. He was just fucked up. <laughs> think about doing that every night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like, it's more intimate, you know? And then they see this this band they don't know. And, and most of the people were so cool, man. Like, like we started building like a real fan base. And we had like, we had real, like real fans. And we like we, we would see that out on the road, especially like when we started like after Warp Tour, we built a little bit of a fan base. We went out the, the tour after that was terrible. We did like so you go from one high to like the lowest of lows. Yeah. And we did like literally played for nobody every night. Damn. Every night. Every um, night. <laughs> we played at the masquerade. You know what the masquerade is? Yeah, yeah, we did. We, we played there for nobody. I think it's closed now. Nobody, I think so. nobody was there at all. I mean, when I was like, I'm, bro, there was like tw- maybe 15. You remember how like people. opening at, at like the basement would be like the opening guy and there'd be like five people walking around. That's oh. where we played. Oh, at the basement. In the fucking lowest level. Oh, because oh, was no, like, no, three, no, 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 I know. I, we're talking, talking about. about a different venue oh. called the basement, but, but yeah, there's. No, there's, the masquerade had like called, two or three it's levels, right? Heaven and hell. There's heaven, which is the upper level and hell. So yeah, that, damn, that's a big venue to be empty too. <laughs> that's a big venue. <laughs> that's a fat venue to be Bro. empty. That's crazy. But I mean, man. like, I mean, I don't regret any of it because no, it, uh, like, that's it's awesome. the reason I am how I am now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bro. I don't regret any bit of it. Like, I love the guys from the band. Like, I, it's just some things just end. You know what I mean? It's, how does how does that work with splitting money when you're like you don't? There was no money to split. Oh, there's no. There's money. no. There's, so we didn't even get to that point. <laughs> we split the six fans that are out there. In the <laughs> we we lost a lot of money on Warp Tour because we go into it not knowing. Oh yeah, we got to get an RV. We got to get a trailer. We got to yeah. do this. We got to do that. All right. Yeah. yeah well, you yeah, gotta, think about stringing so many events and all of a sudden you got to yeah. cover finances. I mean, I, I I try to keep an eye on our events. You know, like you yeah. you see it. To in be, those shows, like, there's a big overhead. Yeah. Dude, l- luckily, you know, our events, I'm happy if we break even. Yeah. We lose money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're not doing it for that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I think I think live events are better for brand anyways than money when you're first getting started, at least. Mm-hmm. Once, you're, once you're huge, once you're selling out stadiums yeah. or something, yeah. it's different. I Dude. think 2019, 2020, there's no need to tour if nobody knows you. <sighs> Don't fucking do it. Like, the, the people can, like, yell at me and... Hey, no, whatever. Agree. But like, I coming from me, coming from somebody who's like done like a, a lot of like good tours and some bad tours. Um, just wait. Like, you have social media in your hand. Mm-hmm. You can build a fan base from your bedroom and tour when you're ready, and not go out and stress out and and start to hate what you do. Yeah. No, I definitely agree with that, man. You know. That's definitely a thing. Dude, I'm excited, man. You should play some music at our next event because, dude, we do this thing, the music sharing station. Mm -hmm. And literally, our first time in Atlanta, we just tried this thing out, okay? So, like, we got this big venue space and we got this little deck that's only supposed to hold maybe 50 people. And then we set up out there. But, dude, people get in line like crazy. There ends up being a 100 and something people out there. People sharing and they all play three-minute sets. So, we go to New York, just play a quick, like... Yeah, I didn't know you guys did that. That's dope. Imagine imagine being, though, a person that's never played your music for anybody except your friends and you get to play a set, a three-minute set in front of, like, 100 people. That's fucking cool. Oh, man. That's dude, awesome, York, man. And, and they're even bigger. To Toronto, you were playing like in front of a good sized concert <laughs> crowd and just getting in line. And that's people, awesome. People dapping you up and shit. Like, but see, that's why you do those events. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's you fun, break man. even, but you really don't break even. You gain because yeah. you're gain, you're you're doing something for your fan base. Yeah. You're doing something for your for your crowd. That's awesome, dude. I'm telling you, man. Toronto was the craziest event I've ever I've ever even been to. Like, not mm. even just cymatics event. I'm I saw the about fucking ever, stories and shit. The live. I mean, and the the um. The line outside was crazy. Oh, yeah, dude. Those 300-something people. But, like, dude, the amount of, like, love, like, the producers have for each other. Like, support is fucking next level. Dude, yeah. you're going to see this shit, man. I'm telling you, dude. They Like, dude, they were doing it to Simon Servita, dude. He'll get swamped. But somebody like you, man, dude, you'll be surprised at how many people come up. And yeah. they'll be like, oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? I Yeah, I, I, I can see it, too, because I get hit already, like, when are you going to hang with the Cymatics guys? When are you going to do a podcast? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, literally, like literally like a lot i think it's because they know that we always have people out here too yeah probably just waiting yeah and they've seen like there's been a lot of people with me 
from like the beginning, bro. Mm -hmm. And they, they've they seen the journey, you know, and they're like, yo, you got to be on there, man. You got to like, you got to, you got to get on there. I'm like, it'll happen. It'll happen. And here it is. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. No, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Do you want to wrap this up soon? Do you want to, do you want to go into like bonus yeah, yeah. questions? On and, audio? Yeah. yeah audio sure. only. And then maybe a, a giveaway if we're going to do one. Yeah. We've been pushing for a while, huh? An hour? Yeah. yeah. Wow. That went quick. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, that's, quick. that's what it is. Um, okay. So a couple things, guys, we're going to do a giveaway. Uh, we're going to do also audio only like bonus section we'll ask them a bunch of great questions maybe maybe some hardcore production stuff too just dive a little bit deeper uh but that part's going to play only on spotify and soundcloud uh and apple and all the different podcast apps so uh, after that but but first i wanted to say first off you guys should definitely check out larry on instagram i would say for sure thank you posting a lot of content is there anything else you want to tell the people before we switch over you get me <laughs> <laughs> that's his sound by the way have you seen any of the content that's, that's it. It's not a bad Dude. branding move, bro. It's no. actually really good. <laughs> People love that. Dude, shit. I'm gonna tell you. Know, right. I, I, I don't know, man. I just I started it before anything started like really going off online, and it, it just I, I just what I haven't stopped first? doing. Was it like a, I knew this was gonna was come. Just always, me. Was it always just like a a kind of just hooky thing, or was it just something? It started off. Me and Peter Piffin were saying to each other. Actually, he probably started saying it before I did. <laughs> but it was you get me. It was you know the guy who did <laughs> men's not hot. Oh, yeah. that guy. Yeah, he does mad characters. He does different characters yeah. and shit. And Piffin knew all these characters, and he showed me one. And one of his characters was an Uber driver, and he would be in the middle of conversation, and he'd be like, "You get me, you get me." <laughs> and then we just started saying it to each other, Dude, <laughs> and then from there funny. it ended up in my fucking videos. And who I don't know, I don't Dude, know how it happened. Hilarious. Me and Drew we say all kinds of goofy shit. We make up words all yep. the time. Started what? off as an inside joke. That's fucking hilarious, yeah. man. Dude, you get me. Drew, what if we put our random shit oh, well, and be I like, Schliebels? <laughs> I don't know if those are quite as good. We literally make up goofy words Bro, all I feel the time. like the, the, if you Code just words. do something for long enough, it's just going to catch. <laughs> you know? Dude, there was this funny thing that Drew used to always talk about doing to his friends or some shit. Like, like, like to do this with your group of buddies, start saying a word and just casually using it. It could be a funny word like schlupel. <laughs> just start, <laughs> start using start it, it and then see if you could get them to like try to use it like you do. Just as Bro, a joke. It's, it, that's, it's like human nature. It's going to happen in a small <laughs> circle and then it's going to just expand it before you know it. Dumb, dumb yeah, it could be yeah. something real dumb. Well, like, uh, like you get me. <laughs> literally every time i see somebody at a show you get me yo, yo. every time I oh, see you're somebody never getting past that bro. no it's I, not it's done i got i got it's some I got random some dms you get me dude i got something funny for this contest are you gonna do the giveaway and go to the bonus round uh yeah so so let's do five 100 gift cards you know right. yeah sure all right we're gonna give away five 100 gift cards all you gotta do for a chance to win and we'll do on this one episode, we'll do it. We'll do a couple because if you happen to watch this on Instagram as a post, that'll be one too. How about that? But uh, uh, on YouTube, drop a comp for a chance to win. Uh, we're five different winners for a hundred dollar gift card. Just drop a "you get me" in the comments. We'll pick a random "you get me." <laughs> I want this bitch to get at least two thousand "you get me." <laughs> you get me <laughs> if you get me. Dude, that'd be funny. You just look at the comments. Just oh, have it's like, gonna be all. That. I sent you a DM by the way. Oh yeah. Oh, you, you should check that out right now. Uh oh, I'm check it. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm excited to have this. That's this part, part of the contest, oh, right? Yes. What is it? I have it. You get me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that is the official sound. Dude, do, 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 watch, watch there be a lot of producers watching this and be like, oh, that guy. Yep. Oh, that's who that guy is. You know what I'm saying? That's is that funny. this part of yep. the episode? That's fucking funny. Uh, as if I don't like plaster my face on every video, like at the beginning, like the, oh, as yeah, big as the whole that's video. That's good, bro. That's good yeah, dude, you want facial recognition. That's powerful. And like, dude, you ever see the people that just post a picture of themselves that goes off? They, yeah. don't, they don't need any almost content. They, mm -hmm. they themselves are the reason people like it. You know yep. what I'm saying? That's yep. definitely a thing. I mean, that's Post Malone right there. Yeah, yeah man. There's that connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That deep people just like fuck with you as a, as a person, mm -hmm. like not even as a producer. I'm just like literally seeing that in the la over the last few months. Yeah. People just constantly like thanking me just for putting the videos out that I put out. Like it's crazy. Dude, yeah. bro, I've been thinking of so many ideas during this whole podcast. I'm just gonna just break out because, like, dude, we I'm just sure. like the stuff we just yeah. been talking about content creators, and I'm just like, damn, got a TikTok idea right now or something. Some gold. All right, you want right, to go yeah. into the audio only? Yeah. Okay. So starting 